My name is Jacob McGrath. I am the treasurer of Yellow Springs Schools. As a public employee, um, I am here just to present the facts um, and, and in no way intended to influence or um, contribute either way towards any issues that may be on the All right, so today I'm talking about maintenance versus capital improvements. I guess I'll, I'll leave these back, here. back there. Jay, would you like a chair? No, I'm fine. Okay. Um, I'm very informal, so feel free to um, shout at me at any time. Um, any questions that you may have, I try to be as personable and open as possible. So, maintenance versus capital improvements. Um, if any of you pay attention to our board meetings, you might notice that I recycle a lot of stuff. So this, this is out there as well. Um, Speak up. This is, um, this is something that a lot of people get confused on. They, they talk about maintenance and they, um, what they really mean is capital improvements. Uh, even some of my board members still are, are not misuse this term. They say, well, we haven't done maintenance. Well, what they really are talking about is we haven't done capital improvements. Um, so I want to outline those differences today and sort of where the money comes from to do each of these types of projects. Um, so maintenance is short term, annual, biannual, sometimes triannual stuff that you might do. Um, maintaining your HVAC system, roofs, parking lots, paint, repairs, mowing, <laughs> mulching, cleaning, etc. Um, the maintenance budget all comes out of our general operating funds. Um, HVAC, we pay a service, uh, Mechanical Systems of Dayton, they do our annual HVAC maintenance. Um, roofing, we do most of our roofing repairs in-house, most of our annual maintenance or biannual maintenance in-house. We also work with Trimco. Uh, parking lots, that's crack filling and resealing. That is the maintenance of your parking lots and also restriping if you do um, a reseal. And then we, we have a lot of mowing. We have 27 acres at East Demon and about eight and a half acres of mowing at Mills Lawn. Is that um, done in-house? Yes. Didn't say. Um, and then, which we'll come to when we get to the expense side, I'll, I'll show where some of these expenses come from. Then you have your regular fixing and replacing small items, fixtures, doors, floors, painting, systems, troubleshooting. Capital improvements. These are items or improvements that last five years or more and cost more than $5,000. This would be an HVAC upgrade or a roof replacement. Um, a repaving project, which is different than resurfacing. Resurfacing is when they go and they put the new, you know, it looks shiny and black, but underneath it's what you already had before. Um, repaving is when they sort of grind it up like they did on the way out of town here. Mm -hmm. um, track resurfacing, vehicle purchases, um, and then technology upgrades. Not our regular annual technology purchases, but more significant technology upgrades if we were revamping all the wiring in the buildings and getting um, new wireless routers throughout the building. These can be funded through PI or permanent improvement levies, bonds, special project funds, like we did with the track project, that was a special project fund. Um, and then you can also use your general fund. You can use your general fund for pretty much anything, general expenses. Um, building projects can maybe funded by a single issue. So sometimes you'll see a levy just for a new roof or um, just for a lighting and an HVAC upgrade. Um, field houses, theater projects. And then um, is there a plan? Yes. But I will say this is capital improvement plan is sort of number one on the capital improvement plan is the building issue that we have on. And then after that, I'm already looking forward to 
what are the other capital projects that we have coming up. So a capital improvement schedule example, this is not anything that we have, um, but um, things that no, nobody is really thinking about in, in the near term future, but we're on the horizon. Uh, we just installed the track. Tracks need to be resurfaced, um, ideally every seven years, but between seven and 10 years, that's what keeps your track from having to be completely redone. Uh, the field house project, uh, originally when they did that uh, track, it was supposed to be for a track and field house. They did the track, it came in over, uh, we went to do the field house. Was, was, they borrowed the money pre-COVID, of course COVID happened, track took two years to complete. When we got done, there was not money for a field house project. Um, those monies actually went into redoing the roof at the high school. Uh, not all the roof, the gym roof and facade. Um, Mills Lawn parking lot resurfacing. This is already on my mind as something that's coming up. It's not glorious or glamorous, but these are things that you should do to avoid a complete resurfacing project. Um, and then, even if there were a new building, you want to start thinking about <coughs> when's the next lighting project? When's the next HVAC upgrade? Generally speaking, lighting can be done within five years, honestly. Um, lighting is advancing very quickly, or it has um, in the recent past, where you might go ahead, like uh, when I was at Greenview, we did a, they did a lighting project five years before I got there. We did another one when I got there, because lighting improvements are just that much better and save that much more energy. So um, it is an improvement or an HVAC upgrade. Um, again, HVAC is one of those things um, that besides being maintained, also needs to be upgraded over time. Um, there's been a lot of HVAC upgrades, especially with COVID and clean air. All right. So this is our budget for 2024. I saw that you had the uh, Terry's thing. This is the state of the schools. State of the schools. Yeah. Same chart as state of the schools. This is our entire budget. So general fund and our other funds. I'm just going to show you on here. 45% goes to salaries. 22% to fringe benefits, which is you know, your health care and retirement for employees. 13% is purchase <coughs> services. You have about 3% for supplies. 1% for capital outlay from our general fund. And then we have 2% miscellaneous, 1% other financing. And then everything else is actually other funds outside the general fund. We have our debt retirement, our bond fund. That's 2% of our total budget that's paying for that 20-year-old project right now. 1% um, of our budget is permanent improvement. We currently have $150,000 coming in per year that goes to permanent improvement. And that's 1% of our budget. Food service, 3%. Other local funds, these are small funds, um, student activity funds, athletics. 1% um, state grants is practically nothing. And then federal grants make up 6% of our Question on that, sir? Yeah. Why is uh, federal grants an outlay? Hmm? Why, why, is a, why is a federal grant an expense? Are we paying? I mean, so are we paying? you get money for federal grants. You have to spend money. So it, it's money in, money out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it is part of our budget because they tell us this how this is how much money you're going to get. So this six percent is this the difference between what we paid out and what we're getting in? Um, federal grants are one for one. So you get a federal grant, you spend it, and then they reimburse it. So, so it's a separate it's a separate category though. It's not spent on any of these other things, right? Federal grants are, um, it depends on the federal grant. Some can be used to subplant, some cannot. Subplant is when you have an expense that already exists and a federal grant allows you to 
use federal money to pay for something that already exists, and then. But but they would show up in these other categories, or do you, you have to account for them separate? You account for them separate. Right. Different yeah. fund, different yeah. pot of money. Yeah. So when you talk about funds in governmental accounting, it's it. um, it's like separate bank accounts. Right. Could you now, give an example of what a federal grant? Title would? one. <laughs> Title I, uh, okay. IDEA, special education. Um, the most recent, ESSER, that is the uh, COVID grants, <coughs> COVID-related grants, the CARES Act. Only one person at a time. So we get COVID free from the government? Is that what that does? Um, you, <laughs> what, so the CARES Act that came out um, shortly after COVID happened. Yeah, here's money. Here's money. What? They come with a bunch of red tape. This is what you're allowed to spend it on. Um, some of it, uh, a lot of it went towards um, diagnostic tools or online education tools um, that were expenses that, like a lot of schools, may have not been prepared for one to one online education. Um, a lot of schools got caught up with that. Um, and then, as far as ongoing curriculum expenses, the diagnosing where students are um, sort of before and after COVID happened mm -hmm. um, and continuing to monitor that. So Jay, just because I think some of the confusion is a, a sense that it could be sort of double counting, but as if I understand it, it's miscellaneous it's, federal grant grant <clears throat> expenses here. Because we're they're not miscellaneous. Well, just a whole variety. There's a bunch of different uh, federal grants. Okay, various yes. federal grant expenses. Are yes. Like that six percent. Yes, right? and federal grants could cover salaries. They could cover purchase services. They could cover supplies. But then they would be double. No, they would not be double counted. So, so salaries is everything except what is covered by the federal grants. So this is general fund. Uh huh. And then when you get to debt. Different fund, different fund, different fund, a lot of different funds, very small ones. Um, state is next to nothing. They had the school safety, the Ohio School Safety Grant. That was actually a federal grant last year. Um, they called it the Ohio School Safety Grant because the federal government gave money to the state of Ohio, and the state of Ohio gave that money to the schools for school safety. Um, so it actually was a federal grant. Uh, so these are different expenses. Can you give an example, please, of a permanent improvement? Um, permanent improvement, right now we're using a lot of it to pay debt for um, the track project. That's where, that's where that money was funded, but like a school bus. We made a school bus purchase last year that came out of permanent improvement. Okay. Where, do, where does maintenance fit in this? You have the, the first page. So where does phase. maintenance, that is the good question. Where does maintenance fit? We're going to sort of go back and forth here. It depends on what it is. So um, the HVAC maintenance. We pay Mechanical Systems of Dayton to do our annual maintenance of our HVAC. So that would be purchase services? Purchase services. When we do in-house maintenance, where does that money come from? General fund. General fund, yes, but when you break it down, it comes from salaries and benefits. You gotta pay you know, people. You gotta pay you gotta pay your people that are in-house. Some of it is supplies, the supplies to do it. Um, not typically capital outlet, um, could be miscellaneous, but yes. Maintenance and um, capital improvements come from different places. So this is where maintenance is a lot of different things and it comes from different areas. So there is no maintenance chunk of this slice of this pie, it's spread out at part of some of them. Correct. And then your permanent improvements, or your, your capital improvements, you try to get as much of it out of that permanent improvement as you can. You try to drive your expenses there to, um, for permanent, for capital improvements. <coughs> Ideally, 
you have a permanent improvement in place that covers most of your capital improvements. So like you have a vehicle schedule. This is when we're going to need a new bus. Um, this is when we're going to need to do a piece of a roofing project. So a new bus is a capital outlay. Where does that fit in here? Permanent improvement, and if you don't have enough money left, then you gotta then you gotta use part of your general fund. So it depends on what is on your budget for capital improvements for that year. That's why getting a schedule is, is really important. So if you take some of the money out of salaries because you don't have enough in the permanent fund, does that mean people take a pay cut? No. So salaries. And benefits are pretty much a fixed expense. You're going to pay that out every year, no matter what. So we're going to. Okay. Yes. All right. So this this is sort of my my uh, interactive part. Where do these expenses come from? So if we get a new roof, where do we think that would come from in that pie chart? Maybe not a maybe not a whole new roof. Maybe a section. Well, that's a permanent, permanent improvement. improvement. Permanent improvement. Okay, if we do parking lot ceiling, just the top coat, where is that coming from? Purchase services. Typically purchase services. Yeah, you're going to pay somebody to do that. We don't, we don't have the expertise in the house. New carpet. Supplies? No, Probably know. a purchase service, but... Yeah. Oh, so lay <laughs> new carpet, but the carpet itself? The, yeah. Sometimes you, you can break it down that way, but it, if you're just looking at the, that. Um, okay, this is actually a, a, a real example. Boiler repair for $11,000. Purchase service. Purchase service. So it is not a permanent improvement, even though it's over that $5,000. Yeah. Even though we hope we're not gonna have to do it again for some time. It's not improving the boiler that's there. It's not replacing the boiler that's there. No. You're just repairing it so that it keeps working. <coughs> all right, new plumbing fixtures. We're putting all new toilets in one of our bathrooms. Capital outlay? Mm -hmm. No. That's Is a toilet $5,000? No. But permanent old 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 Maybe one bathroom though. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe it's just one toilet that's broken. Supplies and then your your salaries and benefits because our maintenance guys in house are probably going to pull that and, and replace it. So we're not redoing the bathroom. You're just putting a new fixture in. An HVAC upgrade. Permanent improvement, hopefully, yeah. Fencing. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean teaching and physical ed. It's <laughs> <laughs> like around the middle school. Very funny yes. feeling. <laughs> not not like the sport so, fencing. So I'm gonna say not not the sport fencing. No. <laughs> around no, like, the middle lawn. Like the one around Mills lawn. Would that be a capital? That's permanent. So yeah. I would say this is this is my trick question and on here. This is my trick question because <laughs> Fencing kind of depends. The one at Mills Lawn, did we have a fence there before? No. no. So it's um, an improvement. I do, it is an improvement. It is changing what's there. It, it's changing the function of your facilities. So a new fence, um, capital improvement. Yeah. But if, you replace the if we're replacing the fence that's around the track, that's maintenance. You're, you're not... Uh, you're not improving it. You're not doing anything. You have an old dilapidated fence. You need a new fence. That's maintenance. Yeah. So that's my trick question. <laughs> Student laptops. <laughs> supplies. Yeah. Oh, supplies. Okay. So they are not worth $5,000. They're generally only good for about four years. Uh -huh. It is educational supplies now. We, we don't have computer, well, I mean, I guess we have a, a lab for the, uh, our eSports team, but you, you don't have the computer labs with all the Mac 
computers like you used to and you know we're not going to buy another set of computers for 10 years no now now the students eat the laptops so okay hopefully not literally but when when you're talking about less than 5,000 you're talking about each individual individual oh so it's supplies it is supplies okay. all right gymnasium seating are you repairing or installing new is it new See, it's probably not new. You probably had seats in your gymnasium before. We we got some. We redid some of the seats in our gymnasium last year. It's not an improvement. It's just what's there. That's All right, a new elevator. Now this is. I'll say. Hopefully, this is a good point. That's an upgrade. I would say it's an upgrade. It's meant to last more than five years. You're not replacing it with the elevator that's there. There's there's an existing elevator, but if you get a new elevator, it's going to be better than the elevator that you have. It's like an HVAC upgrade. Huh. When if you do an HVAC project, you you are not going to use the technology that we have in there right now. Does anybody know what a DOAS unit is? <laughs> Designated outside air system. This is this is the biggest thing in uh, HVAC right now. HVAC systems now, all the schools, you have to bring in fresh air. Right. So they all have these, uh, it's the bane of my existence is, is HVAC and, and temperature complaints. Jay, I have a quick question. Could you estimate from your purchased services, it sounds like a lot of them are for the maintenance expenses of that 13%. Is um, that true? Am I a lot of them, and then we do have um, some educational purchase services as well. Mm -hmm. um, that is mostly around student testing. Mm -hmm. So when you have student testing, it, it depends. Are you buying the test? If you're just buying the test and you're grading it yourself, that supplies. But a lot of times these are the type of tests where, yes, we're buying the test, but really we're buying the service where we buy you know, the test and they create it for us and it gets back the student numbers. Um, other purchase, there's some other big purchase services as well as far as OTPT speech services. Um, a lot of these come from the Green County ESC. Um, so there, there are some other big purchase services that are not maintenance, but um, I would say uh, a lot of maintenance <coughs> stuff is purchase services that's beyond what you can do in-house. You know, we do a lot of it in-house, and then there's things that you can't do, like the HVAC maintenance. We don't we don't have an HVAC technician. So if we were having this conversation two, five, twenty, fifty years ago, looking at a similar chart, the maintenance would be in there. The maintenance just is in as there. it is now. It's been there. So the argument that we haven't done maintenance is BS. Wrong, perhaps, would be a more charitable way. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> um, now, this is something we're, we're going to get into revenues here. This is a question that get a, you know people ask a lot. Well, why do schools ask for new operating money so often? This goes back to the 1970s. House Bill 920 it was designed to keep property taxes from inflating. Um, now, this is the majority of property taxes. When they're voted in, they go into it at, at an effective amount. You're trying to capture a dollar amount. And the amount of revenue it collects on current properties is capped at that level. There's a few exceptions, but that is the way that the majority of property taxes work. So as property values increase, millage is reduced so that the effective millage collects the same amount as when you voted it in. So this is why schools, and if you look at our levy history here in Yellow Springs, there is a long list of operating levies that date back to the 1970s. I think they rolled everything up prior to 1970 into one line um, on the county auditor's website. Um, and then there is an exception, of course, because they can't make anything easy, and that's when you get to the 20 mil floor. The 20 mil floor, um, and they say once you get down to 20 effective mills for general <coughs> operating, it stays there, and that is when you start to see um, growth in property taxes. Uh, but only on the 20 mil floor, so not on your permanent improvement, not on your bonds, um, not on emergency levies. Those are all outside your, your general 
um, operating levies that count towards the 20 mil floor. So if we magically doubled the number of houses in Yellow Springs, would that cut in half the amount that each housing unit paid for real estate taxes? Or Assuming that you built so a, work, if you built an equal if you built an equal size school district within our school district, yeah. theoretically, yeah, so we would cut your your millage in half because now now you got twice as many people paying the same you have twice the value amount of money paying the same amount of money. Okay, right. Would you um, go a little bit more into the twenty mil floor? What what does that mean exactly? Um, well. So let's go through this okay. and I'll circle back. All right. So where does funding come from? So this is a very similar chart to expenses. 38% comes from real estate, 2% personal property, part of real estate. We have 15% income tax um, coming in, other local, which is a lot of it's student fees. Um, then you have state foundation, career tech, and state allocation. Those are our state foundation payments. That's what comes in from the state. Um, some other financing. Debt, retirement slash bond. 1% permanent improvement is 1% of our income. 3% for food service. Other local funds. State grants, again, very small, and then federal grants is 9%. That's just because our revenues do not equal our expenses exactly. So that's, that's the difference in the number there. Um, so when we talk about the general fund, we're going from real estate to the state allocation over there. Permanent improvement is sort of that, uh, that, that capital improvements that we were, we were talking about. Debt and bond retirement, that's what we talked about before as well. 20 years ago, we borrowed money to do additions at the high school and Mills Lawn. So you have to have money coming in. That's also a real estate tax. Um, so that's local as well. Um, but the rest of these have to cover your general operating expenses. 20 mil floor. Okay. It's in here, but it's not all of this. We have two, and I guess maybe I will shrink this. You can just tell us. It doesn't have to be graphic. Um, we have two emergency levies that bring in $2 million, roughly. Mm -hmm. Those are a big chunk of this. Okay. So the 20 mil floor, and that's, I, I do wanna, I do wanna show. so people can see it, but we do have to scroll is the problem. We have inside millage. There's 10 mills that are always inside mills in every taxing, um, every county in Ohio. Those 10 mills are split up between schools, cities, the county, townships. They all have to split 10 mills. Um, it was David Graham didn't know the history on this. When it started, it was a long time ago. I want to say like the 1930s. Do not quote me on that. But um, when they did 10 mills, they said everybody gets 10 mills, and all the local entities had to split that up. And at that time, we got 4.3. So this never changes. It always functions at 4.3. Then you have all these operating bills, all these that say current expense. 
We also have our permanent improvement, our two emergencies, and our bond. And those are all outside milling. So they, yes. vary, they vary with the uh, Yes, values. they do not count towards the 20 mil floor. same dollar amount and then when they get to 20 in total they stop shrinking and then as property value growth happens then you do see these numbers start to grow but it is not all of the school's income starts growing at, at the same rate that property values grow it's just the 20 mil floor um, then we have the, yeah this is the Permanent improvement, it was voted in at 1.2, it's now collecting 0.85. So that's where, like I said, you see that shrinking to collect the same dollar amount, the 150. And then there is the two emergencies, 1.06, 915 roughly, and so 2 million roughly together. And then, um, then the bond. And then bond, that was voted in at 3.3, we're now just collecting 1.81. Um, you have a couple things that, that contribute to bond millage shrinking. Bond millage can shrink because values have gone up and everything, you know, so they're just aiming to collect that dollar amount, but then school districts often refinance. There was refinancing about 10 years ago. When the school district refinances, it needs less money to pay its debt so the millage goes down no matter what happened, to, you know, even if property values are the same. When you refinance and you lower your debt payment, then you don't have to collect as much money. Who's providing the financing on the refinance? Or on an original? What are you talking about? So, I mean, um, when you go out to finance, we're, we're using RBC, it's a banker. Oh, okay. So you, you just like getting a home loan, so to speak, you go out and you finance, because most people don't purchase their homes in cash. Now, if you did, great for you, and I'm very happy for you, but uh, most of us have to borrow money to get a home, so you might shop around. Um, so that, that'll, that's what will happen as you go and you shop out and you're trying to get the best interest rate um, and structure your debt schedule. Um, so. It's like that, and then often, just like owning a home, after a certain amount of time goes by, if interest rates are favorable, or if you have money to, to put towards um, a big chunk of the uh, principal, you're able to refinance and lower your debt payments. You know, if, if when you went out and bought your house, you were paying 7%, now you have an opportunity to pay 3.5% interest, there's some expenses usually involved in refinancing, but when you look at the life of the debt, it's worth refinancing. So, um, and, and the debt's being paid by school levies or by levies? By the bond levy. And, and bonds, okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a home loan, it's a bond. Uh, and if it's a bond levy, does that mean everybody who contributes taxes is paying for that equally or something? That's Proportionately. Important. That makes more sense, yes, of course. But, yeah. uh, but we're not buying individual bonds for the school. Not every, every individual isn't buying a bond. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it might, it's probably a collection of bonds. Okay. Um, and I am not a banker, I will say that. So this is, this is why. Um, 
we hire that service out because they know the bond market and so they're sh again they're shopping to try to get you the best interest rate at the time um, but then like I said later yeah this goes down either two ways goes down through typical inflation and property value growth so you don't have to collect the same amount of mills to pay your debt schedule or if you change your debt schedule and lower your debt payments then the millage goes down as well uh, Jenny, the question, do you have a, the, the column where, which is effectively what we're paying now, it's been adjusted for property values, what's the total, like the total millage that um, a person with, who, who owns a home in Yellow Springs is currently? So this is a little bit old, I will tell you that, this is 2021, because okay. it, really, it was what was out there, um, it was in the paper, except for old months ago, probably about a year ago. Uh, yeah, um, it's, and and um, when she initially put it in the paper, she, she put our original voted vote. She totaled these up. Right. Said sixty six. No, way <laughs> high. It's I, I want it's around thirty three. You know, I was trying to do it in my head. I came up with rounding and came up with about So I know so, yeah. I know we're at twenty here now. <clears throat> um, so Okay. So they won't go down anymore. So around 33. Could you? I used to know the answer to this. I haven't paid attention in a long time. Just define to me what the millage is. What is a millage? Or What's a, a mill? A mill. So um, it's another presentation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it shouldn't be that hard. <clears throat> a mill is you have your appraised value. You pay on 35% of it. Uh -huh. So you only pay mills on your assessed value, which is 35% of your appraised value. Uh -huh. And it's 0.001% of your assessed 0 .001%. value. 35% for every $100,000 in value per year. Which value, the assessed or the appraised, the appraised value? $35 of the appraised? $35 for $100,000 of appraised value. <coughs> appraised or assessed? Appraised because it's 35%. Uh, 35%, right. So when we, I recently got a letter from the county telling the auditor, telling, and you mentioned his name earlier, telling me that my property value had gone up by a certain amount and here was the value of it. That's the assessed value. Right? That's the appraised value. Oh, that is the appraised value? Yes. Yeah. So the the increase that I was complaining to him about, I'm only going to be taxed on 35% 30 of, of that. Of that, okay. So well, if your house went up. Was, yeah, it did. By, by a, I mean, I, well, there are houses that have gone up by this. If your house went up by $100,000, you're not paying on a hundred thousand dollars more. You're paying on thirty-five thousand dollars. Okay, um, that's a mill right there. So I, see. I know it works one. because if that's you have a hundred thousand dollars in value, one mill, point zero zero one, is thirty-five dollars a year. I think um, when the auditor was here um, last time, he I think the stat he shared was the average. Value went up what 23 percent, but the average tax bill went up 10 percent. To yeah, so when your appraised value goes up because of the way that levies function, um, now if they if there was no inside mills and there were no floors, they wouldn't go up at all, but because there's inside millage and the 20 mill floor, there is growth on those so um, it depends on the, the type of property tax levy so your, your property values go up 23 percent your property taxes don't go up 23 percent depends mm -hmm. on the type of levy right because you're trying to keep it cap it at a certain amount of revenue that is correct okay so the if the levy passes this time, is it 7.9 mills is going to be plugged into this and added on to what we currently pay? Not exactly. Yeah, I knew that, but 
So, all right, is everybody um, satisfied with the difference between maintenance and capital improvements? Yeah, it is. Then I'll go back in time. Okay. See. This is from the regular meeting on September 14th. Of the school board? Mm-hmm. Um, and if any of you don't have this handout, I have it as well. Okay, we are doing a phase in. So, this is where it does get confusing. Could you blow that up maybe 125%? Yeah. Thanks. So the county auditor is not gonna get involved in this because he doesn't, he doesn't know our plans and they're not set in stone. Now, we know as a school board, this is exactly what we're going to do. But he's he's not gonna he's not going to um, stick his neck out there on this. Mm -hmm. um, so on the levy. We have 7.9 mills because that's how much money we need to borrow for our project. But we also know that we have an outstanding bond. And that outstanding bond doesn't fall off for four years. So our goal is to set our debt schedule to phase in our collections. The levy says 7.9 mills is new money, and eventually we will collect 7.9 mills of 2022 dollars. So it's um, also very confusing because 7.9 mills is never even going to exist because when we put it on, we were working with 2022 figures. So don't use your 2023 values to say this is what it's going to cost me. You need to look back at your 2022 values of your home and 7.9 mills. But our goal is not even to collect 7.9 mills when we start. We're doing a phase in, and that means we're setting our debt schedule so that until that old bond falls off, we never collect more than 7.9 mils of 2022 values in total. So that's the goal. Was that before the current assessment, reassessment of our property value? Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We say this is how much money we need per year, and the county auditor gives us a millage amount. And that, so, we asked for that in May, in May, May, early June, yeah. and he sent us 7.9 mills, but he was functioning with 2022 figures. It. So it does make it extra confusing because this is a reappraisal year. So yeah. we're working in the past, and then he, we're, we're in the present now, and that's, that's what people are all afraid of. My 2023 values, no, we're, we're working from 2022 values. So does that mean the, what we see on our, when we vote is gonna be a smaller amount of money? I mean a smaller millage, or? No, when you vote, it's going to say 7.9 mills. But then when they collect it. When they collect it, they're gonna select it. Assess the taxes. It is going to be based off of your... 2022 home value. Yes. Well, that's a shame. I mean, that well, people won't know that. We've, we've we put this know. out there. We know. Um, yeah, I don't pay attention. We, <laughs> the, the, paper actually covered, the paper covered the, the 14th meeting very well. I, I was very happy with their, their reporting on that, and, and I think they, they tried to get that message out there as much as possible. But, but yes, that is something that's very, very difficult because you know, most people are not watching school board meetings for 
years leading up until when a levy happens. Um, or even then some. <laughs> So the goal is 7.9 mils in total. We already have 1.8 that we're collecting on that old debt. So the new issue is really going to be 6.1 mils in growth for our bond because we already have bond money out there. Um, so we, and we don't want to collect more than 7.9 in total. So what you're going to feel is not 7.9 mils in growth. I'm just going to, I'm going to punch that in here so you can see. This is the figure that's going to be on the, on the levy. The full 7.9, the 277 he rounds up, or I guess he rounds to the closest dollar. But what we're really aiming to collect Is 213, 214? In new money. In new money. Because we're already collecting 1.8. But um, will that cause a short? I mean, that money that you're collecting now is being used for something. That is right? correct. So Paying off the 2,000 additions. So <coughs> is it just that you're because of the phase-in of construction that you can do it this way? No, um, it, it's the way that debt is issued. So, so it's just setting up your debt schedule, um, which oh, I also I have. So when you structure your debt schedule. I get bigger, please. Yep. How you're able to accomplish that, that phase in. You don't need the thumbnail panel. Is, um, I, I can't get rid of that. Oh. Is your net debt service. This is how much debt we would pay each year. You got your principal and interest. Um, so those first four years, you'll see it's about 1.2. And that's because we're already paying out a bond that's out there. So they're, the banker is taking our current debt payments and he's saying, okay, you, you have to use the bond money that's already coming in for that. So they lower the debt payments for the first four years. And then after four years, when that old debt falls off, the debt payments grow. They grow 1.55 up to about one point. Seven is the peak, because um, this is an estimated debt schedule. So this doesn't even exist yet, um, but this is their best guess. Per year. So per year. So you're paying 1 point, so in 2036, you're paying 1.2 million in interest. 2036, yes, on but 1 .7. probably not. So then um, you're, you're not anticipating the OFCC kickback? Right, yeah. Okay, so I could, but I could, I was just using that as an example to understand the yes. columns. Yeah, um, and just like a home loan, your um, interest is front loaded. So a lot of times they, they put more interest up front, and then when you get towards the end, you're paying almost all principal. Uh, that's just the way that debt schedules work. Uh, is the is the principal? It's for thirty seven years, correct? Thirty seven years. That is the bond. And what is what? Um, it, does that get the uh, payment down to zero, or is there a remaining principal debt at the end? At thirty seven years, it would be nothing. Now, what are the chances that we pay for thirty seven years and we don't do anything? Highly unlikely. Um, we also know now that we're we're going to get an OFCC credit. Go back to if you go out to the school website, you'll see um, we have an estimate of the OFCC credit. It's about eight and a half million dollars. Um, typically comes in around 10 years from start to finish. 
you have to go out and borrow your money, plan your project, start your project, finish your project, reconcile with the OFCC, get on their schedule for payment, and then get your money. It takes about 10 years. And also, A, can't even say right now, you know, if a levy passed, when we would be breaking ground, but we gotta plan everything first. So it, it takes some time. Um, but the estimate is that we'll get eight and a half million dollars. That money can only be used towards an OFCC project, and we only have one eligible OFCC project. Um, and we won't have another until that OFCC project is no longer <coughs> viable. So, um, quite some time in the future. What is OFCC? Ohio Facility, Facility Construction Commission. Oh. It's not just for schools, it's for all public entities. So villages, townships, cities, um, I guess maybe even parks, I'm not an expert on the construction commission. So when the eight million and change comes into our little hands, then we that will immediately pay down the debt from the fifty-five or whatever million to whatever is minus the eight million, and then it's, it's like if I probably pay, not pay immediately an extra payment that lowers my my interest payment the next time because so there's the same thing. Um, it's not exactly the same thing. It's not exactly like a home loan. Uh, there's different restrictions on um, different types of bonds and what you go out and do. It um, has to be callable um, and stuff. So it does work out well because refinancing typically happens around 10 years is the, the first time that you're able to refinance. Um, so their, this is their, again, <coughs> their best guess, um, projecting 10 years out. We would use that chunk of change to pay down the principal, to refinance, and get that debt service schedule reduced from 1.7 around this time down to 1.02. Um, and that would be for the remainder there. So the bottom number, um, so I understand it, I mean, the bottom number of principal after 2060 has a remaining remaining balance of 16 million 20 million. No, that's the total principal. <coughs> that's the total principal paid? Total principal paid. How much is the debt for? The bond for? It's for 26. Six, three. So there will be a remaining ten million? No. You're gonna pay on this for ten years. Uh -huh. You're gonna get the OFCC money, you're gonna refinance. So if you subtract the first ten years, you're gonna pay about ten million dollars in principal in the first ten years. Oh, the support center. Okay. And then you're gonna pay the remaining principal. Over the next. So the, the ten million is from the OCC. Yeah, the next twenty-seven years. When you, when the debt's refinanced, does that increase the terms as well as the the um, lowering the interest rate? Uh, I mean, does that's it not our, the term? that's not in our plan. Okay. Our plan is to keep the the term the same. Got it. Thanks. Not not to extend the term. So to speak, you know, so we're going out for 37 30 years. 15 year mortgage when you refinance. Oh, but we don't know what the interest rate will be yeah. 10 years from now. If it's really high, we might extend the terms. We have that option, right? Then, not now. I would say they're probably going to do the most advisable thing at 10 years when they go to refinance. Right. That's what I would expect. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, looking into that crystal ball, this, this is their estimate based on today. And what they know now, um, that's that's the best you can do. Um, but the idea is, it was 37 years. Here we're going to spread it out over yes. the full 37 years. Um, part of the other purpose of spreading out capital improvements over a long time is, you know, who's using those buildings. So 
if those buildings are going to be good for 40 or 50 years, you want the people down here to be paying for that as well. Okay. So, then you, don't need to you know, correct. back in 2023, 2024, it doesn't start in 2024. 2024, those people are paying. If they leave, if they move away, they're not going to continue to pay for this if they're not using it. Um, so you want people that move in in 2046 and stuff to be paying for that because they're still using the project that we're financing today. All right. Going back to the not 7.9, but 6.1 plus 1.8. So for a few years after this passes, there will be only an extra 6.1 charge to to us, and that 1.8 will pay off that bond. And then after that happens, will it? It'll then increase to 7.9, um, or something higher. Something. Than it was. Something it, it, to pay for the the debt that we're putting on now. So, right, it's not, you're never gonna feel more than that 277. The 7.9. The 7.9 in 2022 values. So we're gonna raise the rate, but only by part of it until the bond is paid off, the old bond is paid off, and then after that, if the rate will stay the same, but more money will be coming out of our uh, our accounts. But the rate will change every time there's a reappraisal, every time well, we build yeah. a 90 unit Yeah, development. I just want to understand yeah. the, you know, yeah. the basic principle. Yeah, that, that of course, is, is going to change. Yeah. So that but assuming everything stayed the same, that's what would happen. Then that's what that would happen. So effectively, then, in four to five years, our taxes will go up because, no. oh, because the, the old bond no, gets paid No, it will stay up. the same. We, so the, the goal is... So the goal is to grow that debt retirement bond, we'll that piece of the okay, pie. So what will happen then, let me try this, we'll just change the rate at which we're paying it off. Because now we'll be getting more money. It'll change the rate at which we're paying off the current bond. But the total amount we collect for bond will stay the same. That 277 will stay the same for the life of the bond. So my taxes will increase if I have that particular house in your example by two hundred seventy-seven dollars. Part of it will go for the new, and part of it will go for the old bond. Incorrect. Oh, go up by two hundred fourteen because of the new bond. We'll be collecting two seventy-seven in total for bonds. Part of it's for the old bond. Part of it's for the new bond. And you're already collecting the difference between the two seventy-seven and the two thirteen. Now you're just going to add two thirteen to it. Right. We're going to add 213 to it. It's paid off. Once the old bond get, gets paid off, you're going to be paying, paying the same amount for okay. bond. It'll just be paying for a different project. Okay. So the first four years, you're going to be paying for both projects. Mm. And then for the next 33 years, you're just going to be paying for the one project. That, that makes sense. No, I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tap the end. Oh, my. But yeah, there's there's no increase in four years to your taxes. It's the increase will happen at the beginning, and that's what you can expect to pay on bond every year. But it is very confusing explaining the phase in and how. Mm -hmm. This is what it's going to say. This is what we're going to do. Um, but that's that's the way it is. Property taxes are slightly confusing. So, any other questions, comments, concerns? How much is estimated to uh, be generated from income tax? Income tax right now we have one. We bring in about one point nine million, so it would be an additional one point nine million, and that's going to be used for a different type of funding. <coughs> different. It's not. Doesn't pay for the bond. Bond is property tax. Right, but it is going to be used to pay for the project. Pay for the project. How does that work with financing? Because income tax is a much more variable thing. I mean, bonds. Bonds get the money they need to get right. to meet that threshold to pay the bank. Mm -hmm. But income taxes can fluctuate depending on economic 
upturns and downturns. So yes. how does that, how do the banks so, deal with that? Well, the banks don't really deal with it, we do. Okay. The banks, you, you get a very similar debt schedule. It's gonna be for costs, it's not gonna be for a bond. It's gonna Certificate be of participation. Ah, Different okay. lending tool. Yeah. So you'll you'll get a debt schedule that's the same, and you'll need, we'll need the 1.9 million to pay that debt schedule. Um, is that more risky? Is it a different interest rate? Any any factors? Um, like cops can be. It, it does. It, it's different than a bond. Um, the market is a little bit more fluid than bonds, which can end up being good or bad. Right. What's the uh, expected interest rate for the cops when you start this um, project? I think they're both around 5%, but um, I will, yeah. It, you know, in reality, it plays a, well, I don't know, because again, it's a little bit more fluid, so so that's why they didn't do a cost financing schedule for us, um, because they know that, that interest rates move up and down more with, with certificates of participation. Are they fixed, is that a fixed rate? document or will it it'll be very time. similar to this so it's fixed rate once it once you lock it in it's a fixed rate okay. <coughs> um, but yeah you're so income tax growth and I mean that's what we're going to assume is that people are going to make more money it, it depends on how much that growth is and okay. when um, there was a year that income tax decreased here after COVID. Um, so what happens is you've got to get it from somewhere else in that piece of the pot. And it's going to come from general, you know. Yeah, but, that, that uh, would be the, the But when you look at the, yeah. What will happen is this piece of the pie will, you know, right now we're already at 1% getting income tax. If the levy passes, you'll get 2%. So you'll see this grow. You'll see this pretty much double. But then the same side on expenses, you know. Capital outlay from the general fund will go from 1% to, to 16%. Do we, have any, do we have any understanding of how the income tax is being generated now? Um, we're a small community. Uh, do we have a sense of how much is coming from Oh, people in the top 10% wealth bracket. Uh, you, what could happen if, say, our wealthiest They don't give us a breakdown. They don't, they don't give us like a that. breakdown like that. Okay. And it's not just people living in the village. It's people living in the school districts. Right. School districts larger than the village. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be blunt. There are a couple of very wealthy individuals that are probably contributing significantly to that current revenue number. Let's hope they are. <laughs> no do you need these back? I do not need it back. That is yours to keep. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll take it back if, if you don't want it. Is it. I mean, are you doing other presentations that you could just keep? Um, this is my only presentation, oh, but right. I do keep stuff if, if people want to come in and they want it. Well, it's yours. Thank All you. All right. Thanks. I have a better understanding now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it, it really depends. Is it and something that people are asking again? Just like, um, are income tax increases? They generally aren't set to expire, right? They're just put into place, and then it depends. Ours, because we're going and we're borrowing for thirty years, you can go between five and ten years on income tax levies. Uh -huh. But because we're borrowing for 30 years, we can't really. We, we can't we can't do a 30 year income tax. Yeah. So we're doing continuing because it's more than 10 years. I figured there was some reason why we would continue. Yeah. That makes sense. Because if you're if you're counting on that money, and you do a 10 year renewal, then in 10 years you're like, okay, what happens if it doesn't renew? Then then you're really in trouble. So yeah. um, it it's sort of ill-advised to not lock up the money that you need for the life of the debt. Um, yeah, I think you'd have a hard time finding a lender. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, this, this for me is hard stuff. Uh, it's been a long time since I took any math and, and stuff, but you've explained it so clearly. I thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done. Thank you.